going to cover a little bit of what it takes to wire an alternator on one of these old cars. A few upgrades you're going to want to make and uh, I'm just going to show you what we did and uh, what you got to do to get that alternator to work with the electrical system. Uh, so I'm going to go through the, as much of that as I can. Yeah, stay tuned. So this is a GM uh, 10SI alternator, uh, which actually fits pretty good on Triumphs. Uh, you have to make a couple of modifications to the bracket, so I'll just show you what we did. You have to make an aluminum spacer to fit in the old bracket and then we used a long bolt to go all the way through the bracket. On the front side you can see that long bolt passes all the way through the alternator and through the engine front plate and into the bracket. Now some of these have a nub on the back side of the alternator which we thought we needed to cut off uh, and I think if you wanted to use it with the stock three-quarter inch belt you would need to do that but on this motor we have the Moss Motors narrow belt conversion and that brought everything a little further forward so we probably wouldn't have had to do that but we just filled the space with some washers instead One of the major differences between the old generator and this new alternator is that the alternator is internally regulated. What that means is that we don't need the old mechanical voltage regulator to uh, keep the battery charged and the voltage at the proper levels. So there's a couple ways you can get rid of this. Of course you can just get rid of it completely, but we're actually going to use some of the terminals on the voltage regulator. Uh, just as kind of like a junction box and that that kind of keeps a stock look in the engine bay Which is what we're going for So to use this voltage regulator as a terminal box We're first going to take some of the internals out of it just to make sure those don't interfere with uh, anything else The connections here at the voltage regulator have to look like this now. Uh, you take the brown uh, yellow wire that used to be kind of the main wire coming from the generator. Uh, that's no longer used. We're going to be replacing that with a heavier gauge wire. So you just need to hook that up somewhere. Uh, alternatively, you could pull this out of the harness. Uh, which is probably a little nicer way to do it, but we didn't unwrap everything, so we're just going to have that kind of hanging out in there, not hooked up to anything. So we take our brown-blue wires and our brown-white wires, uh, and together those used to send the signal to the ammeter, which basically said whether the engine is charging or whether the battery is, uh, you know, whether the current's flowing the other direction, which would mean your battery is going dead. Uh, and we combine those two here at, at these terminals. Uh, the only thing you kind of lose with this setup is that your ammeter is only going to show you if the battery is going dead. Uh, it's not going to read the other direction, so that's kind of a minor downside to a setup like this. Uh, the last two wires we have to set up are the 
small brown yellow and the small brown green. Those wires are now used to signal the warning lamp for the generator, which is built into these newer style alternators. So basically just passing the signal from the alternator to the wire that goes to the light on the dash uh, because we don't need the extra stuff in the control box that used to be in there. Unfortunately, I don't have the terminals. I need to hook this up so right now, so I'll have to get something to make that work, but I'll be putting that on this terminal right here. Quick tip for anybody that needs to, uh, wants to keep it stock looking, I did need to change out this terminal. You obviously can't get these rubber things anymore, but you can slide them back, hide a regular connector under there, and then just kind of slide them right back over and nobody will ever know. On the alternator side, what you're going to find are three wire connections. Now, one connection is the main uh, charging power cable. Uh, and let's talk about that one for a second. So the uh, original Triumph wiring was set up for the generator, which could provide about 20 amps. This new one's capable of putting out about 60 amps. So. Running that through the original wire does pose a few issues, so what we've done to alleviate that is basically abandon the original wire and run a new 8-gauge cable through the harness and back to the next point in line, which I'll show you in a second. So that's what you see here. We've got a wire snipped off. That's the brown-yellow wire and a new red wire uh, that's rated for the amperage. Uh, running over to the starter solenoid. The other two connections on the alternator are your sensor wire connection, which is this red one here. That basically tells the alternator what voltage to output. And uh, for this application, we're just running that straight back to the output post on the alternator. So the other wire is the signal wire, which feeds to a light on the dash and that wire actually really needs to be hooked up to a light or a resistor of some kind. Luckily we have a light on the dash and we have connected that through this brown green wire which we connected up at the voltage regulator, uh, the old voltage regulator, to connect to the light on the dash. So the light on the dash is still functional and it serves the purpose of giving the resistance this wire needs to see and makes everything work really nicely. The final connection point is the starter solenoid. And that is where our alternator connects to the battery. And that connection is just right down here. This is the wiring diagram, uh, and right now I have all these changes drawn in, in pencil. Someday, I will convert that to a nice, neat digital copy. So, if you're interested in getting one of those, uh, hit me up. So that's the wiring for connecting your alternator to Triumph TR4. That should be a lot better. And stock, we have a lot more power available and should fix some of the issues that uh, the mechanical voltage regulators have and make this car hopefully a little more reliable. So, thanks for watching. <laughs>